Shadow Mapping. So shadow Mapping is a very popular technique used to create shadows in computer graphics for a couple of decades now. So let's see how shadow mapping works. We have a camera, we have a green object and a red object, and we have a light source. And here, this is the view frustum of that camera. With shadow mapping, we put cameras at the light sources. So there is going to be a camera at this light source, let's call it the light camera, and this is going to render the scene from the perspective of the light source. So the light cam sees the scene like this. It sees that the red triangle is in front of the green triangle from its perspective. But it doesn't actually need to know the colors of these triangles. All it needs to know is the depth of those objects. So here the red triangle is closer to the camera so it will have a smaller depth and the green triangle is further away it will have a larger depth value. And this depth map captured from the light source is the shadow map. Next, we're going to render our scene from the regular camera. So a regular scene camera is rendering the scene. And let's look at what happens when we're rendering this fragment on the green triangle. While we're rendering it, we want to calculate the depth of that fragment to the light camera. To do that, we just take the light camera's projection and view matrices and use it on the word space coordinate of that fragment. This will give us the depth to the light camera for this fragment that we see from the main camera. And the trick that shadow mapping does is that it now stores the saved closest depth that is stored in the shadow map for that coordinate. So we take the value of the closest depth of the same coordinate on the shadow map that we're rendering our current fragment at. And now we have two depths, the depth of the current fragment to the light source and the closest saved depth along that ray to the light source. And now we can just compare them. If the depth of our current fragment is larger than the closest value stored, then, well, we are in shadow because there is something on the way to the light source. There is a closer object with a closer depth to the light source along that path. So our current fragment must be in shadow. However, if our depth is very similar or equal to the closest value, then we are not in shadow because in that case, our fragment is the closest value. So that needs to be illuminated. And I've written this approximation here again because there can be precision issues. So you don't want to just compare this with two equal signs. Rather, you want to see if their absolute difference is less than some error value. But yes, theoretically, if they're the same, then you have the fragment that is illuminated because it has the closest depth. But if it's larger, then you know that there is something on the way that is occluding the light. So the example we had was with a point light. So we have this perspective projection that is capturing the shadow map. With a directional light source, you would have an orthographic projection that captures the shadow map. Of course, there are some issues with shadow mapping. And two most obvious one from this diagram are that the entire view frustum may not get covered. Right now, we have this orthographic projection and you can see that it is not covering the entire view frustum. So you should create such a big shadow map that it covers the view frustum. The second issue is that near the main camera, there actually needs to be more resolution because the objects that are near the main camera, they take up more space in the final rendering. So the shadow details for these objects should be larger than some objects that are far away that might be a couple of pixels on the final render. There are of course advancements done to the shadow mapping technique and one advancement is cascaded shadow mapping which tries to solve that issue where you need to have more resolution for the shadow map near the camera than further away. So here's an example of shadow mapping. On the left you can see a couple of objects moving around in the scene. I have a light source exactly in the middle of the scene and you can see shadows forming on this environment. The place where I have these light sources I also have a cube camera and the result of the positive x-axis from that camera is shown on the right. This shadow map right here is 512 times 512 resolution and you can see here that the closer fragments have higher values and the fragments further away have lower values. So it will depend on how you are capturing your shadow map, how is your depth stored uh, and that will affect your comparison that you need to do. But you can see that if this pole comes closer, we get more nearby depth values on the shadow map and thus 
areas that are behind this sphere, these are in shadow. Now we can lower the resolution of that shadow map to let's say 128 times 128. So this is quite a small shadow map and we now start seeing these pixel aliases all around the edges of the shadows. Or we could make it even smaller and now we have these very big pixels. So when in video games you see that the shadows have these jagged edges, that is the result of your shadow map being with a too low resolution. From this video, you should now understand shadow mapping, the vanilla version of that technique, the coverage of shadow maps and the resolution.